Greetings, this is J.R. Dickey. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. And by the way, don't forget our website, graceandtruth.net. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, hang with me. It's about to get better. Okay, today we're going to talk about getting a clean heart. When you want to learn more about grace and forgiveness, that is receiving grace and forgiveness, one of the characters in the Bible you can reference is David, the king of Israel. For all his courage and battle and sincerity and worship, his life was filled with messes. And he often was their maker. Can you relate to that? I sure can. In this life, we don't often, if ever, get do-overs. But we can look forward to one day getting a complete makeover as we are brought into Christ's presence in the sky. Behold, I tell you a mystery, it says in 1 Corinthians 15. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed or transformed. And in the meantime, as we recognize our own messes, We can and should echo David's call to God, where he said in Psalms 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. You know, in fact, all of Psalms 51 is a lesson in this godly attitude. In fact, it starts with the explanation. It says, A Psalm of David when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Now, you probably recall the story. David's army was at war, but the king decided to stay home. One day, he was walking on the roof of his palace, and he espied a beautiful woman bathing on the roof of a nearby home, the home of one of his most loyal men, Uriah. Yep, this gal was his wife. Well, David proceeded to make one of the biggest messes of his messy life. He was captivated by this beauty and commanded that she be brought to him. Subsequently, he made love to her with no mention of her consent. And wouldn't you know it, she got pregnant. So, then the king was embarrassed and did not want his mess to be discovered. So he first recalled Uriah from the war, and then told him, I'll go enjoy a little R&R with your wife. But the soldier, his loyal soldier, was not about to have a conjugal visit with his wife while his comrades were in the midst of battle. So he slept separately and didn't touch his wife Bathsheba. When David found this out, he was alarmed and sent orders back to his general to place Uriah at the very front of the battle and then call for a retreat of everyone but him. The result was reported back to the king. Uriah was dead. One terrible mess compounded by an even more vile tragedy with yet more and more messes on the way as a consequence. Later, the prophet Nathan, by direct revelation from God, revealed to the king that God saw what he'd done. Nathan related a story to David of a poor shepherd who had one lamb, just one, who was most dear to him, and this other dastardly man came and took the shepherd's lamb and slaughtered it for his own purposes. Well, this incensed King David, who wanted the vile man to be killed for what he did. At that point, the prophet pointed his finger at the king and said, You are the man. Well, David was shocked, exposed, and probably aghast. But to his credit, he confessed his sin 
And that is the background of this psalm, which starts, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Immediately, David knew he needed to dump the cover-up and beg for God's mercy. He says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. You know, sin leaves a stain on the heart. Its existence makes us feel dirty and that feeling persists. But David understood that acknowledging his transgression was key to obtaining God's mercy. And he knew that only God could give him a clean heart and renew a right spirit. In fact, the writer of Proverbs 20, probably his own son Solomon, recorded in verse 9, Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? You know, therapy won't clean your messy heart. Neither will escaping into drugs or sex or any other distraction. Denial of the mess doesn't make it any less messy. But in confessing and surrendering our sin to God, we can expect that His Holy Spirit will continue the work He began from the moment he first opened our heart to him. Cleaning your heart is a part of a greater process that will indeed continue until you stand before him, that is God, face to face. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, just like David and me, your heart, your life, is undoubtedly filled with sin-spawned messes, but we can each take comfort knowing that they are all cleaned completely, completely by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 9, maybe you know it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm, and faith to trust him. Look for our next podcast, and may you realize more of his grace today.